Before today's video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest videos. If you want to see a case or topic covered by Paranormally Listed, then go to criminallylisted.com and fill out the questionnaire under the Suggest a Case tab. Celebrities find their way into our homes through magazines, social media, television, and movies. We watch their interviews, look at their pictures, and enjoy their work. It's almost like we know them because we create parasocial relationships with them. And it seems like for many, these relationships carry on even after the celebrity passes away. Number 3. Lucille Ball Lucille Ball was a groundbreaking comedian and actor who enjoyed a very successful career with her notable television sitcom I Love Lucy, which aired in 1951 and continued for six seasons. The show also starred her husband at the time, Desi Arnaz, as her husband on the show. After bringing joy to many people in their homes over the years, it seems that Lucille Ball wanted to continue doing so even after her death. Ball was born in Jamestown, New York on August 6, 1911. Her father died of typhoid fever in February 1915 when Ball was only three years old. Her mother remarried and her new husband, Ball's stepfather, wasn't enthusiastic about having two young children. So Ball and her brother were each sent to live with different sets of their grandparents. Ball's brother was sent to live with her maternal grandparents and Ball was placed with her stepfather's parents. Ball's childhood was difficult. He returned to live with her mother and stepfather at age 11. Ball's love for the stage began early in life and she took drama classes when she was 15 years old. Her career sort of took off first as a model. Like many young, unknown actors, Ball had difficulty booking jobs, so modeling served as a way to pay the bills and get exposure. She used the name Diane Belmont for this part of her career. Fortunately, she was seen on a poster and soon started booking actual acting jobs. Ball's film career had highs and lows. She had the unofficial title of the Queen of the B-Movies. Movie theaters used to show double or even triple features. So, for one ticket, people could see two or three movies. It was usually a main attraction, considered the A-Movie, and then a low-budget film called the B-Movie that played before it. Ball started many of these low-budget comedies that played before the movies considered the main attraction. Some of these included Stage Door in 1937 and Too Many Girls in 1940. She made 72 films throughout her career. She was not only finding acting success in B-movies, but also love. The film Too Many Girls featured actor Desi Arnaz. The two got married in 1940. Along with the B-movies, Ball also had several roles in some main attractions, including The Big Street in 1942, Sigfield Follies in 1946, and Fancy Pants in 1950. You're probably thinking, I don't know about these movies. I know her from I Love Lucy. And there will be a reason for that. That's because it's undoubtedly her most famous role. This is how it happened. In 1942, Ball was working on the radio show My Favorite Husband. It was like a TV show, but only on the radio, so to explain this to kids, it's like a podcast. CBS heard the show and they were impressed with Ball. They wanted her to star in her own show on the network. Ball was excited by the opportunity but wanted her real life husband, Arnez, to play her husband on the show. Of course, due to racism, as Arnez was Cuban, the network was worried that their interracial relationship wouldn't work for their audience. So Arnaz and Ball decided to do their own show and make a vaudeville act together. CBS eventually came back and said that they did want them on the show, even if they were in an interrelational marriage. I Love Lucy was a smash hit and revolutionary in many ways. Ball and Arnaz were the first interrelational couple on television. They also had a six-year age gap, Ball being older. It would have been shocking if people knew but they lied on their wedding certificate. And they were the first show to have a pregnant woman in the lead, even though they weren't allowed to use the word pregnant in the episode. That's a true story. 
The show also had technical achievements. They were the first to use multi-camera film styling, which are now as developed with the camera crew, and it's still used today for many sitcoms. The show was a critical success, winning five Emmys during its six-year run. Audiences loved I Love Lucy, too. For four seasons, it was the number one show in the United States. In hindsight, given the success of the show at the time and its enduring legacy, it would seem like CBS's initial concerns were misplaced. Together, Ball and Ernest created Desilu Productions in 1950 and made other shows after I Love Lucy, which included The Dick Van Dyke Show and Star Trek. Another way that Ball altered people's expectation of women was when she and Arnez divorced and she bought him out of Desilu Productions. She became the first woman to run a major television production studio. Lucille Ball had an interesting, revolutionary, and creative life that sadly ended on April 6, 1989 when she died of a ruptured aorta following open heart surgery. She was 77 years old. But it seems that her desire and love for entertaining was so strong that it brought her out of her grave. Ball's ghost has been seen in the location of her mansion in Beverly Hills and at the Paramount Studios lot. Her Beverly Hills home was demolished after she died and her friend was at the construction site while there were still parts of the building intact. He said he saw her standing in her old bedroom and she even looked at him. She appeared sad and then walked away and disappeared. Some people have said that there are unexplained noises in the attic of the newly constructed house. Sometimes it sounds like someone's moving items around or throwing a party. On occasion when people go to the attic they notice things are misplaced and are found in different spots than where they were previously. There have also been reports that the theme song to her show, I Love Lucy, will play in the attic. Others have reported hearing footsteps between the bedroom and her office throughout the day and night, which is something that was usual for Ball during her lifetime. Some have reported seeing her at the Paramount Studios lot, specifically the Hart Building, where she worked. Some people have smelled her perfume and noticed lights turning on and off. Some have even reported seeing her there. Ball reportedly worked very late at night at the studios throughout her career. It seems that Ball is doing in the afterlife what she loved doing so much in her actual life. She likes to keep people guessing, entertain, and she loves her work. She was passionate about her show, so her enduring presence at the studio lot isn't surprising. Many have said that her ghost is playful and plays jokes. It seems like Lucille Ball doesn't want to leave the stage. Number 2. Michael Jackson Michael Jackson, also known as the King of Pop, had a long, illustrious career that changed pop music forever. His legacy is complicated. He has given the world some of the best and most beloved hits ever. But the disturbing accusations of child molestation against him have always cast a dark shadow. Jackson was born on August 29, 1958 in Gary, Indiana. Jackson had nine siblings, which included three sisters and six brothers. His career began at the young age of five when he and his four brothers joined together to create the Jackson Five. They soon began serving as the opening acts for Glass Night in the Pips and James Brown, among other stars. In 1969, Barry Gordy, Motown Records founder, signed them to their own contract. The Jackson 5 became known for hits including I Want You Back, ABC, and Blame It on the Boogie. Michael was the undeniable breakout star of the group and ended up going solo, releasing albums that included hit after hit. These included 1979's Off the Wall, which included songs like Don't Stop Till You Get Enough and She's Out My Life. This was followed up by the monstrously successful album, Thriller, in 1982. Thriller received 12 Grammy nominations and 8 wins. The album includes mega hits like Billie Jean, Thriller, and Beat It. It is, by far, the best selling album of all time. Arguably, nearly everyone has a favorite Michael Jackson song. His impact on pop culture is indisputable, but his personal life has always been a topic of conversation. He married Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis Presley, in 1994. 
The marriage was short-lived and they divorced in 1996. That same year, Jackson married his second wife, Debbie Rowe. Together, they had two of Jackson's three children, Michael Joseph Prince Jackson Jr. in 1997 and Paris Michael Catherine Jackson in 1998. Rowe and Jackson divorced in 1999. Jackson then had a third child with a surrogate named Prince Michael Blanket Jackson II. As with much of his private life, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the paternity of the children. Accusations of child molestation soon became as well known as the songs when it was reported he often slept in the same bed as children. Several people have claimed that Jackson molested them over a long period. Michael Jackson died in June 2009 at the age of 50. He had plans to start This Is It tour in July of 2009, which had already sold out. Initially, his death was ruled to be a cardiac arrest. In February 2010, the exact cause of death was changed to acute propofol intoxication or a lethal overdose of prescription drugs. The doctor who administered the drugs was Dr. Conrad Murray, and he was convicted of involuntary manslaughter on November 7, 2011. He wasn't licensed to prescribe most controlled substances in California and he didn't have the proper equipment to administer propofol. Jackson had a short, eventful, and impactful life and there's no wonder that he's still impacting people's lives today, specifically the life of Kathleen Roberts. Kathleen Roberts, who was under the impression that she is, in fact, the reincarnation of Marilyn Monroe, said that she is married to Michael Jackson. She said that Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., yes, the civil rights leader who was assassinated in 1968, so you know, is also dead, officiated their wedding ceremony. She believes that Jackson is always inside her body, and she said of their relationship, I feel special that he chose me for a wife, though not on paper. We treat our relationship as though we are married. We have our ups and downs, but Jackson, the truth is, I can't stop loving you. Yes, she quoted the song at the end there. According to Roberts, Jackson loves cookies, he's a big talker, and a big swearer. However, the relationship isn't physical. Although Jackson lives his afterlife by channeling through Roberts, she says he doesn't like touching her. She said that if she tries to become physical with him, he scares me with spider visions and dead corpse visions if I kiss him or try to initiate romance physically. Could he just say he has a headache when he's not in the mood like everyone else? Well, Michael Jackson wasn't like everyone else in real life, so why would his ghost be? The story is certainly strange, but Jackson lived many strange moments in his life, so this may be the perfect fit for him. Aside from Roberts, many have claimed to see the shadow of Jackson during a Larry King special on CNN called Inside Neverland. King was speaking with Jackson's brother, Jermaine Jackson, when it seemed like there was a shadow at the end of the hallway. Many think it's Michael Jackson who is haunting the estate, which is why there was so much difficulty in selling the property. Many people who worked at Neverland have also reported seeing his ghosts around the grounds as well. It would seem that Michael Jackson's time on Earth is not yet complete, but he's choosing strange vessels to make his presence known, but we suppose that's to be expected from him. Number 1. Sharon Tate Sharon Tate was born on January 24, 1943, and was murdered on August 9, 1969. She was pregnant with her first child when she was murdered. Tate was a beautiful woman with a budding acting career, and it ended too early in an ugly way. Tay began her career as a model, and she also did beauty pageants. She became an actor after doing commercials, and had her big breakout role in the film Valley of the Dolls in 1967. She was the second wife of film director Roman Polanski, who had his own traumatic childhood in Poland. He escaped being sent to a Nazi concentration camp. He bounced between families who tried hiding him and roamed the countryside. Both of his parents were sent to Nazi concentration camps. His father survived, but his mother did not. In the 1960s, he became a renowned film director. Tate and Polanski married in England in 1968, and Tate soon became pregnant. 
Their marriage was fraught with infidelity on the part of Polanski, and some argued that her pregnancy was a last-ditch effort to save and fix their marriage. In the summer of 1969, they moved to 10,050 Cielo Drive in Los Angeles, California. They were renting the home, and at the time of the murders, Polanski was in Europe. Wojciech Furkowski and his girlfriend, Abigail Folger, were staying with Tate while Polanski was in Europe. Tate's friend and former lover, Jay Sebring, was there on the night of the murders, and Stephen Perrin was an 18-year-old who was visiting his friend who lived in the guest house. On that fateful night of August 8, 1969, Charles Manson, the head of the Manson family, were Charles Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Linda Caspian to go to 10,050 Cielo Drive and kill everyone in the house. One of the most disturbing aspects of the ordeal was that no one at Cielo Drive that day was involved with anyone in the Manson family. The previous resident, Terry Melcher, was acquainted with Charles Manson. Melcher was a music producer and he and Manson had discussed the possibility of a recording contract, but the deal never happened. Everyone at the house that night, as well as Stephen Parent, were killed that night. Seeing as this was such a gruesome act, it's no wonder people have eerie feelings about this particular residence. Ted herself saw a ghost the day before the attack. She said she saw someone tied to the staircase with her throat cut open. Was it a premonition of what was to come, or a sign that there was already a ghostly presence at the house? If you want to hear more about the story, please check out our video, Three Hollywood Hauntings. The original mansion at Cielo Drive, where the massacre happened, was demolished in 1994, so you think the otherworldly elements would be gone, but that's not the case. David Oman began building a house close to where the old Cielo Drive mansion was located in 1999. It would seem bizarre happenings began immediately, even during the construction phase. There were your normal paranormal events like people hearing voices, objects falling without any particular reason to fall, lights turning on and off, shadows are seen, doors closing, and cold breezes on people's neck. But then there were less run-of-the-mill paranormal activity. In 2004, Oman woke up at 2am and saw a full body of a ghost. This ghost was a man and he was standing at the head of Oman's bed and he was pointing. It turns out that he was pointing towards the driveway that leads to, you guessed it, the old 10,050 Cielo Drive property. Then the ghost just disappeared. Owen tried to investigate the incident and went to the LAPD. He thought he might be able to find something from that night. He saw a picture of Jay Sebring, Tate's friend, who was also murdered that night. And he recognized him because he looked like the ghost he had seen. Owen's house has become a must-see location for those interested in paranormal investigations and ghostly encounters. One parapsychologist, Barry Taff, said of the 4,000 cases he's participated in, Owen's house has the highest consistent EMF reading. Owen said they once had people over and everyone sat at the table. He said he heard the voice of who he assumed was Tate, and the voice whispered, I just want you to know... We're here. Owen stated that he's had several mediums at his home and they claim that the spirits of those who were murdered that night will remain until those who participated in the murders die themselves. It seems that many of these celebrity ghosts have found themselves caught between two worlds. Some are there to entertain, others are there to watch that justice is done. Ultimately, it would seem that none of these ghosts are malicious in their presence and maybe it's just time we learn to live with them and accept them in our world. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. If you did find it interesting, please make sure you subscribe. We'll have a new video about the paranormal every week. If you just discovered this channel, please make sure you check out our other channel, Criminally Listed. We have over 325 videos featuring bizarre but true crime stories. You can find it at youtube.com slash listed. We also have a podcast about cold cases that were eventually solved called Criminally Listed Presents Into the Killing. You can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you find great podcasts. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.